Bread. And welcome to the Slice Bread Podcast. We give you your daily slice of life. I am your host, Gary. And on today's episode, we have on the panel, Lenny. You local boy. Lovely, lovely. We got Mr. Chris. I'm Chris. And we got the sound guy. And last and certainly not least, Bob. Not the builder. We don't build things up. We break them down. And on today's episode, we're going to break things down and break bread. All right. Today, we are talking about fast food places and restaurants. Dining is as old as mankind, and the way we choose to eat has evolved so much from hunting your prey to getting instant food on your lap through the modern-day fast food industry. So, guys, I want to start off with this. Why do you guys enjoy fast food restaurants? This is like the food quality, maybe. Because like, for me, for example, I enjoy a nice grand chicken spicy at McDonald's. So, with that spicy sauce and just... Mm. That's that orange sauce, right? Yes, yes, the yes. spicy yes, yes, yes. one. Mm. So, yeah, let me start off with the boulder himself, man. I like the easiness of fast food. Uh-huh. Like sometimes when you're in the kitchen and you want to prepare your food, it will take quite a bit, take some time. Mm. But like if you just go, yeah, take my money, give me my food. Uh-huh. I like the convenience, convenience of how quick yeah. that is now. Yeah, for sure. Surely if it was all healthy, I don't even think I'd be in the kitchen. But, mm. you know, sometimes you got to take the L and take the health deeply <laughs> small. <laughs> <laughs> and if I do that, I will choose me some chicken. I want that zebra's life. Try it. Put that little barbecue sauce on it. <laughs> Don't. Oh, you sexy. Don't do it. <laughs> just to, just no, to, but just to add, sorry, man, for interrupting you. You take that sauce and you put it on the chips because you oh, it, it, it's I come standard, my friend. And oh. I tell him, be a little, be a little generous. Oh. Yeah? It, it is the feast. Bob, so, <laughs> so you love, so you love the zebra's chips swimming in that sauce. Of course. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, that you know why he's in that sauce? But bro. you know why? Like because it's a unique sauce that's only catered by them yeah so if you go to most restaurants you get the standard um tomato sauce and a potential barbecue sauce yeah, yeah. or depending on where you go you might get a thousand island or you might even get mustard if you go in the morning for breakfast exactly. but like to get a specific sauce that is known to your franchise you got me and what is it? is it a type of barbecue sauce or i don't know what it is it's and I would never la- want to find out, ever. I just like the magical mysteries like Harry Potter all over again. <laughs> I, I won't lie to you, that sauce on that, chi- on that chips is like Michael Phelps in water, bro. It's a perfect Ooh. match. It's oh, a wow. perfect match. And Mr. Cuts, do you like to cut your Gatsby, maybe? <laughs> I think it's very much for the food and the convenience. I mean, uh, fast food, uh, is, it's m- mostly tasty. There's a lot of, a lot of salt going on there, I think. oil. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's not so, olive oil. <laughs> <laughs> but I always get that way. Don't you ever get it where you go to a fast food, you go for the convenience and the food, and then you just end up disappointed afterwards. Oh, too often. Uh, like, like uh, yeah, very often, yeah. And Mr. Lint? Oh, I have to be the third one to mention convenience. Um, you know, you from a long dead work to still come home and cook, it, it sometimes you just don't have the energy for it. And it's much easier to go to your, your local food chain uh, fast food joint and pick up something um, which is great for convenience, not good for your lover in the long run if you do mm. it too often. But if I had to choose, I got to go with, I mean, probably McDonald's is the quickest and easiest, but when I want to spoil myself a little bit, I got to go the steers route. Ooh. And again, I will oh, co- okay. I'll combat that zebra's chips um, with the steers chips. So you're like a flame, so like flame grilled, my friend. Flame grilled. Because I mean, then... It's technically just a little bit healthier. Well, technically, Zebros is bright also, so it's also flame <laughs> grilled. What's oh, your nice. point? <laughs> but here's something I will say, though. Yeah. Um, the reason I would take a fast food um, food over home-cooked meal, let's say it's the liability. Mm. So if you undercook your chicken, it's your problem. You, but the, yeah, the franchise is. is not allowed to undercook their chicken because that salmonella will come for you. You don't want it. <laughs> There's no sending it back. There's no at sending home. it back. At home, you can't send back. <laughs> <laughs> so you make a mistake in your recipe. It's over, Cadovas. <laughs> there, it is not an experiment. It's a tried and trusted product. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm so disappointed you guys did not mention a very good fast food joint. This is a fast food joint actually helping with fractions. It's Nando's because that told you a quarter chicken or <laughs> half a chicken. They teach you math along the way. Exactly, <laughs> no, the, ah, the, that's the a Nando's that went to Woolworths. <laughs> Nando's definitely taught me math because I had to count all my money in my pocket. <laughs> <laughs> so, 
um, do you feel like modern life forces us to make the use of fast food places? Do you feel like it's a good thing or a bad thing, maybe? Or what? I, I will actually say it does force us a little bit. Um, often you have to work odd hours, right? And again, the convenience comes into play because when you come home, you don't, you might have the time to do it, but you're just so naked from the long day that you can't give energy to it. Mm-hmm. And that's where you make, you make the concession, I'm going to go and get fast food because I just have no time to spend on cooking food now. I don't feel it's a bad thing because you can choose what type of um, food you want to get from a fast food place. Like for example, you want something healthy, you can go to Kauai, you can go to Nando's, they, they offer those type of healthy meals. If you just Both of them are going to hurt your pocket. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it comes with it. it comes and with Kauai it. takes too long for my liking. <laughs> <laughs> Look, it comes with it. But if you want something quick and easy, you go to your McDee's, you know, you go to your yeah. KFC, get that bucket, you know. So. Yeah, the thing is, um, Gary, is that people people would look at it as a bad thing, but it's not a, I would, not that I'm sitting on the fence a good or bad thing, mm. it's just a market that's been hit or that's been penetrated because mm. people have seen that I can provide you with food within the space of five minutes. Exactly. So I'm just going to take that opportunity and, and do it. Exactly. Because you also think about like on a Friday at first pass or slap, dude. (laughs) So guys, let's go with the when it comes to restaurants. Like you know when you go on a date with your lady, you have to pick a nice proper restaurant. Why do you guys enjoy going to restaurants? Let me start with Mr. Bob. Okay. I knew you were gonna come this way. Look, I want a steak when I go out. That's why I usually go. I have this rule when I go to a restaurant. I'll choose the most expensive thing on the rule. Mm -hmm. Um most expensive thing on the Menu and take that. If you can't impress me with your most expensive thing, then I'll never come back to this restaurant. I'm food critic at heart. So you, <laughs> so that's your reason. That's my reason. Okay. So you don't go to for the food. I don't go for like my no. for, the ambiance, for the ambiance. Look, if you wanted lazy food, you can go to a fast food drive through mm-hmm. But if I'm at a restaurant, give me your best. Okay. Give me your quality. Let me see what you're about. If you can't do spectacularly at your best, what on earth on your menu is supposed to impress me? Oh, okay, mm. I see what you mean now. So, mm. you, so you're not going to get bamboozled by those, like, all the fancy lights and whatnot. No. You're going to produce on that on the pl- pl- food. It's all lies and propaganda, bro. <laughs> they want the ribs. It tastes worse than the rib place you usually go to. <laughs> Show me what you got. And Mr. Katz, man. No, I would say I mainly probably go to restaurants for the social aspect of it because personally, I'm never thinking to myself to go to a restaurant. Not oh, sometimes, but not always. Mm-hmm. So, and I'm also not a big eater. So I would say if I do find myself at a restaurant, it is maybe 80% because someone wanted to go to the restaurant. But definitely, I mean, restaurant food is always always good to, uh, to an extent. Do you have like a best and worst experience from a restaurant? Or My worst experience at a restaurant, I suppose it's when, you, when they mix up your order or something. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so do you fight and send it back? I don't know. Sometimes you want to make a scene... And other times, yeah. Show, it's not worth it. Depends on what, what, I don't know what your vibe is that day. Yeah. If you make a scene, they might just compromise another one of your meals. And like, you Some know. Chris uppercuts, you say, man. <laughs> I will say that Chris and I did go to a restaurant one time. Ooh. And the waiter actually removed his plate while he was eating. And yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that the was gone. Oh my yeah. gosh. I think I think I was maybe more annoyed that the waiter didn't understand the etiquette of the knife and fork yeah, positioning. Yeah, 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 which is like one of the first things they teach you. Exactly. Is Ooh. why you put down your knife and you. I'm not even sure how it's supposed to be, but <laughs> mine wasn't open. in any position. <laughs> yeah. My knife and fork was in my hand, bro. Put that plate back. <laughs> <laughs> and Mr. Lenny, man, can you provide for us? I like to go to restaurants for. Well, the same as Chris for the, the social aspect, but for the total experience, for the meal, for the conversation, for all of those promises. So you go to a place and also, again, much like Bob, you take something on the menu that's going to stand out because yep. you're not going to get it specifically somewhere else. This is more or less tailored to them. And then they need to wow you with that. And all of that adds into your restaurant experience. So Look, yeah. Lenny, it doesn't necessarily have to be the most expensive thing on the menu. It has to be their speciality. Yes. Yeah. Something yes. that they're known for. Yes. So if you can't do what you're known for, great. Then your whole business is a problem. <laughs> you, you, you go to a steakhouse, you expect your steak to be... If you go to a steakhouse and they, you ask for medium rare and they give it well done, it's, a, it's game over. One, zero review. How often does that happen, though? Probably not, bro. They they it really happens. specialized. They focused in their stuff, man. It happens all the I I, I won't say where. <laughs> I won't say where. <laughs> Name and show you. I feel like that's a personal attack. <laughs> it, this was at a very prominent hotel. 
Hotels. Oh. That I went to and get to ordered a steak. And I ordered the steak there. Yes, sir. And they brought it back. Well done. Well done. You lost a customer. I sent the steak back. And they, again, they needed to make me a new one. So, again, I ordered the steak there. And they bring it back to me blue, which is... Yeah, that's the worst. I can't understand people that eat So, blue, they, mi- they messed crazy. up the steak twice. No, I, I sent it back again. Yo. And, um, Third time a charm? Well done again. Ooh. It came back wrong each time. And then I just was like, you know, give me a burger. You can't make a steak. You can't mess up a burger. Yeah. And they're on that lies and propaganda. <laughs> Even those hotels. The funny thing with me is. when it comes to choosing a restaurant, I actually look at the drinks menu. Because I want to see how social you are on that on the drinks menu. Because if you are going to offer certain type of drinks, then are you going to bring a lot of people into the restaurant? Because most of the time, people don't really come to eat your food. They come there after like um, work, fun- work functions or after hours to grab a few drinks and whatnot, man. So if you're not catering on the drinks menu, how are you really bringing business? Is your food that elite, man? Because let's be mm-hmm. honest, you don't really care that much when it comes to the food. Okay, what do you, what are us, you expecting on the drinks Most of us are not menu? alcoholic, so we do care. Yeah. About oh. Yeah. <laughs> but what, what are you expecting on the drinks <laughs> menu, Gary? With you. Oh, you're calling me an alcoholic? It's fine. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. No judgment. But I understand what you're saying. But like, do you want to go to a restaurant filled with people? I want some level of exclusivity. Yeah, like in a quiet way. corner. Yeah, like I want my booth or I want my table. True, true, true. The people that I'm, I came with is who we're going to spend time with. I don't still want a whole crowd buzzing at the back and then I can't hear the person because that's the intimate part of the conversation. True. Yeah. It, it's, yeah. Strange, it's strange that you'd mention that, Bob, because I feel like a lot of people go out to restaurants to go out. So yes, they want, exactly. So they want the vibe around exactly, them that's as my well. Thing, yeah. It, well, I cool. suppose yeah. that depends on the type of restaurants we go into. Yeah, if you yeah, go then. into a two star, by all means, enjoy yourself. Mm. If I go to a five star, I want a level of an yeah. experience. Okay, yeah. I see. Mm. Yeah, but I think on on Gary's point, what what you're talking about is more not the standard drinks that you'd get on your everyday restaurant. But if yes. you're going somewhere special, to have something exquisite to drink on the menu. Yes, that's um, right. something that you're not going to get at your average restaurant. Exactly, my question. Um, if you're going to a more upmarket special place for an experience, they should have something on the menu that's going to wow you even on their drinks menu, not only food. Exactly, because one of the restaurants I went out a few, I think it's a year ago, we went to this place, it had like a house of gins. Basically, all the gins around the world. A to speciality, Z. A to Z, dude. It was like <laughs> amazing. And the food was also um, top notch as well. So when I look at that, I know okay, they catering for both sides, you understand? Yeah. Because like, you don't want to chill there with a $2 steak with a, with a water in your mouth the whole time. Like, when the, when the $2 you, steak? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> What's a $2 steak? It's <laughs> a 30 rand steak. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for bringing Damn. the messy. Thank you for bringing the, the currency in here. <laughs> but yeah, that's what I'm gonna go with. So guys, what are your favorite establishments or other steps you don't want to go to? What I mean by is like weighing all the pros and cons that we mentioned now of like your fast food restaurants and mm-hmm. your, your established restaurants. What are your the ones you your go tos and what's the ones you avoid? I wanna start off with cuts. Are we so, are we actually gonna Call the restaurants out there. Like, I'm not going to you ever again. <laughs> I'll put that hotel number one of my. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you fine. You have one. <laughs> I must now uh, uh, selectively decide which one I don't want no more. <laughs> <laughs> I always just go for. You want to like which which place I would go to? Yeah, like we should go to which place. Establishment. Or, or, yeah, which, which, like, which establishment? Like, do you have like a uh, establishment you normally support? I like got main establishment you put. There's no main one. I mean, all I want to say is chicken licken over KFC. <laughs> <laughs> ah, oh gosh, <laughs> controversial. <laughs> Discuss. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> exactly. And Bob, um, a place, a establishment I wouldn't go to. Um, I don't particularly have one. Mm. Honestly, I'd go to every place and. I either have a mud experience or a great experience. I very rarely have a bad one. Mm-hmm. And I can't even think of bad ones to go by at the moment. Wow. Mm. And Mr. Lenny Kravitz? <laughs> I, um, I will say, I do want to try out chicken licken. Mm. Only because the last time I had it, I think it was eight. You know, when we were younger, they disappeared for a while and yeah. they came back. So I haven't had them since they came back. And they've been here back. They've been back for, for a long a while, time. No, yeah. haven't they? So I want to try them. I do know some people prefer it over KFC, but like to judge for myself. 
Um, but one restaurant I do always enjoy going back to is Castle Baron. Ooh, yeah, that's a steak. Lovely. Lunch, yeah. Right, eh? lovely. And I would say they've always given me uh, an amazing steak being in a more um, established restaurant. Um, things are prepared a lot more um, health consciously. Mm-hmm. Um, so you've got your olive oils and not your cannabis, oh, okay, okay. you know. <laughs> um, but no, you, you can choose between your, your chips or salad. Yeah. Um, you know, your, your, your warm veg, which is lovely at times. And they, I say the best ribs. No, saddles. No, yes, no. I was going to say saddles. I'm, I'm, I'm with Bob. I'm with Bob. I'm with Bob. I'm with Bob. For me, I really have a bad place to go to um, when it comes to restaurants. But the one place I love going to is Bosso. I love the nachos. <laughs> I know you do. I'm a huge na- nacho fan. If you don't give me proper nachos, I'm gone, bro. I'm gone. You're going to make a noise. Exactly. I'm going to jump over the wall because <laughs> yeah. I, I love my nachos. But anyhow, guys. I actually like to search for that. Like, try to... Search who has the best nachos. Uh, that will always be up for debate. No, I don't think there'll ever be like, this is the best, this is the best, because each one's preference is different. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Like some people will like their nachos a bit crunchy. Eh, not me. I like it soft. Ooh, is it? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Nice. It's like if you did the pizza thing, who's thin base, who's thick base. That's I'm a true. thick base guy. That is yeah. true. Mm-hmm. I'm a thick true. base guy. And I'll fight you on your thin base. <laughs> you know why? Because I can blow you away. So you you eat the nachos <laughs> the next day, you warm it up in the microwave. Yeah, why not? Oh, That's nachos. That's the soft end. <laughs> it's not the greatest. Should we judge how good food is by the quality of it the next day? Interesting. It's a good Should question. you judge it on how hungry you are at the time? Because then everything <laughs> then tastes even good. better than yeah. what yeah. it really is. You can't bring this up because you know McDonald's chips the next day is the worst. They they yeah. dead men. Yeah, yeah, but uh, the when next you, four hours. Well, but then when again, you have it though. <laughs> yeah. But then again, to be honest, and no way to to MCD, but the fries only has like a thirty minute lifespan. <laughs> True. It does. Certain foods definitely have. A lifespan that is minutes. If it's not, uh, if it doesn't get you in time, your experience of that, your enjoyment of it is, it's ruined. You know what? I'm thinking of a, a restaurant that I actually really enjoyed when it was still around was Starlight. You oh, know that yes. American diner? Starlight yeah. diner. I could, I could get like a, a cherry or a vanilla Coke. Yeah. Oh, that made me come back every single time. Not just that. Remember that um, two for one special with the starters? Absolutely deliciousness. Oh, wow. Bringing out the memories. Yeah, no. Yes, dude. Fun fact. So certain... Um, engines, not sure what their shop is called, but certain engines actually. One stop. Yeah. Certain, some of them actually sell vanilla Cokes. Yes, no, I, um, I, I got it, the plugs. Don't super worry. expensive, but. I got the plugs. And Dr. Peter's <laughs> everywhere. Well. There is spas that have it. What? I got the plugs, don't worry. Also, <laughs> also, note engine provides pretty decent pepper steak pies as well. Oh, yeah, no, no don't. <laughs> One stop. Listen, the garage pies, yeah. guys. Do not look past it when you had a heavy night or you're trying to recover quickly. No, those, hey, those pies go down that well. That with a cream soda. It's a, hey, you is back the, in the game. <laughs> is the combination a garage pie and then a bottle Coke, the glass bottle Coke? No. Guava not, juice? No cream <laughs> soda. <laughs> Wait, guava juice. I, do you know like a guava juice? Get the spot to that pie, bro. No. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are making me hungry, you man. <laughs> I'm so hungry, hungry now. Oh, so hungry that I want to get to the last point. <laughs> okay, so with everything was being said right now, do you prefer to cook a meal for yourself, to get fast food, or spend time at a restaurant? So I'm going to start with cuts. I'll say cook for myself. I've, um, first of all, I do enjoy cooking, and I feel like I have a lot more control over how it's going to taste. And obviously, it's a, a cheaper option sometimes. But I like the restaurants. I like the fast foods. But I would go with cooking cooking at home. You know, cooking Rice Krispies doesn't count, eh? Of course it does. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Not the Boulder? This is like Mary Kill. <laughs> <laughs> but okay, fine. Then I'll do it too. I'll say I love the restaurant. I like cooking for myself. And the other one can go. Awesome. <laughs> I can do without it. I can do without it. <laughs> I gotta say, I definitely love going to a restaurant and the full experience with the people you're with and getting a, a good meal that's supposed to be better than your own cooking abilities, right? At the hotel. Definitely not that hotel. <laughs> but I will say, I absolutely adore cooking. It's just um, pasta. 
But no, I'm a little, I'm a little, I'm a little bit more adventurous than that. But I can make a mean uh, prawn pasta, hey, seafood pasta. Pa- I'm telling you, pasta is the way of life. I gotta go with cooking because, yeah. And it, again, if you're doing it with people, it could mean it could be a lot more special uh, as well if you're preparing it yourself. Okay, my final words is I'm lazy, so cooking's out. Um, I'm cheap, <laughs> so I'm not going to go to a restaurant. So he needs that strip. fast food. There we go. <laughs> give me that Mickey D's right now. <laughs> to all the listeners, please give me some of your opinions on this episode. And last but not least, thank you for tuning in to the Slice Bread Podcast. Please tune in to another Slice of Life. <laughs>